Welcome back. Coffee, it's a must, right? Americans drink almost 30 gallons of the stuff per person each year, and it may actually be doing more than just keeping us awake. Recent research suggests that drinking coffee may keep your brain healthy, but is caffeine bad for your heart? Our nutritionist and author of this book, Secrets for a Healthy Diet, Monica Reinagle, is here with a coffee quiz to help us sort out fact from fiction. Good morning. Good morning. Well, okay, so we have a lot of questions about coffee. A lot of us obviously think it helps keep us awake, so you have a true and false quiz we're going to go over. All right, first question. Coffee protects against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. I, I didn't know that. Is this true or false? That's true. You know, coffee not only stimulates the nervous mm -hmm. system, it appears to protect it. And people who drink coffee regularly have a significantly lower risk of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. That's pretty good news. Okay, so it's warding off disease. Coffee protects against, uh, is coffee bad for your heart? Is that true? Uh, coffee's gotten a little bit of a bad rap on this. It's mm -hmm. actually false. Uh, the reality is coffee doesn't increase your blood pressure, it doesn't cause heart attacks or arrhythmias, and most importantly, people who drink coffee have no increased risk of heart disease or heart attack compared with people who don't. So, so you it don't need to worry about it. It doesn't, no. Okay, well, hey, that's good to know. Coffee makes you a better driver. Really? Is that true? <laughs> well, now, if you've had a couple of drinks, mm -hmm. having a cup of coffee is not going to make right. you safe behind the mm -hmm. wheel. But assuming you're sober, coffee does improve your alertness, your vigilance, mm -hmm. speeds up your reaction times, and that can make you a safer driver. I, I'm going to have a question for you after we're done with this. <laughs> coffee drinkers need less sleep. What do you think? No way. You're right. You're right. You know, coffee does make you feel more awake, mm -hmm. even if you haven't had enough sleep, but it does not reduce your body's physiological need for sleep. And you will pay the price for that sleep debt, even if you're compensating with caffeine. So it's still important to get enough sleep. Okay, so following with that, co drinking coffee can improve your mental performance. I believe that. That is true. Yeah, it's obviously it's not mm -hmm. going to make you any smarter, but it does help you focus and yes. concentrate, and it can also improve your memory mm -hmm. and your recall. So you may perform better on tests, for example, and other cognitive tasks on the, with the benefit of a cup of coffee. Or on air. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Decaf is a healthier option, true or false? I think? would say true. Well, if you're sensitive to caffeine, obviously it would mm -hmm. be a better option. But actually, a lot of the benefits that are that you get from drinking coffee are from the caffeine itself. And in fact, I didn't know this. Caffeine is actually a powerful antioxidant. Didn't know that either. Yeah. Well, in fact, because we drink so much coffee, researchers estimate that it may be one of the more significant sources of antioxidants in many people's diets. So the question, speaking of dieting, is can it improve your workout? Yes. In fact, up until recently, the International Olympic Committee mm -hmm. banned caffeine as a performance-enhancing drug. Wow. But unlike most performance-enhancing drugs, this one's safe for you to try at home. You can have a cup of coffee mm -hmm. about an hour before your workout, and you may be able to go just a little bit harder, a little bit longer. If you have a headache, coffee can relieve a headache? Have you ever tried that? Well, I've had headaches because I haven't had my coffee. Ah, that's another that's another question. That's another but, issue. Okay. But one of the things that caffeine does is it constricts the blood vessels, mm -hmm. and this can relieve a headache. It also makes other pain relievers like aspirin or Tylenol up to 40% more effective, and that's why you'll often see caffeine in headache remedies. So, do you want to drink coffee with your Tylenol? You can, uh, okay. but you want to watch out if you're taking something like Excedrin mm -hmm. that already has the caffeine oh, in yeah. it, you want to make sure you're not doubling up by mistake. I've noticed that too. If, you, if you've had a couple of drinks and you take Excedrin the night before you go to bed, it keeps you up a little bit. Oh dear. Not, not that I've ever done that. Okay, coffee is addictive. I believe that. Well, this is half true. Mm -hmm. Technically speaking, you know, in the strictest mm -hmm. sense of the word, it's not addictive, but if you drink coffee mm -hmm. regularly, you'll become habituated to the caffeine, and if you stop, you may end up with a little bit of a headache that for a headache couple in of days. In yeah. fact, doctors have realized that a lot of post-operative headaches are actually due to caffeine withdrawal. So if you no have a kidding, you can do yourself a favor. If you have a procedure coming mm -hmm. up, try to wean yourself off the caffeine okay. gradually over the course of a week or so, and then that'll be one less thing you have to deal with. Who knew? Drinking coffee has no health risks. Well, this one's actually false. Although there are a lot of benefits mm -hmm. to drinking coffee, it's not completely without risk. Pregnant women are advised to avoid it because it can lead to lower birth weights. If you have heartburn or reflux, it can make those symptoms worse. And of course, for any of us, too right. much caffeine can mm -hmm. leave you jittery and can disrupt your sleep. So you want to enjoy it in moderation. Do you drink coffee? I do. Me too. Okay, you have a great book. You have a book signing coming up real quickly. Where's your book signing? Tuesday at 530 in the afternoon at Limbricks in Belvedere Square. I'm going to be answering questions about nutrition and having a book signing. And you have everything in here from what sweetener to put in your, your stuff to the type of butter to use. I mean, you cover it all. I tried so. to answer everybody's questions about uh, nutrition. All right, Monica, thank you so much for joining us. We certainly appreciate it. And good information. Who knew some of this stuff? This is great. And don't go away. Dr. Kim Hammond answers your pet questions. That's when we come back. But